It's three years later, and the image of the, of the United States remains largely what it was back in 2009, which is to say better than it was uh, during much of uh, President Bush's term. And overall confidence in, in President o Obama remains pretty high. It's slipped a bit, and I'll show you more uh, the, the degree of that. Um, but what the survey finds is that we've seen a significant decline when we ask people specifically about Obama's policies. Uh, his approval ratings have declined rather substantially. And for many people in most, in most countries, not most countries, almost all countries, uh, there's a feeling that uh, Obama has not lived up to the expectations that people had about him uh, back in 2009. Well, more specifically, here's what we found. 80% of Europeans and 74% of Japanese remained confident in Obama when we asked them to rate how much confidence they have in his conduct of foreign policy. That's only a little bit off of what we found three years ago, and those are very high numbers. Um, opinions of, of, of Obama, though, are much less positive in China, 38 percent, Mexico, 42 percent, but more positive in Japan, 72 percent. But the numbers when we ask a general question about do you have confidence in Obama are pretty good, not quite as good as they were. Now, the U.S. US favorability rating is 60 percent uh, this year. It was 67 uh, percent uh, last year. Uh, that's pretty good. Uh, the biggest decline, single decline, uh, significant decline is in Germany where favorable ratings of the U.S. fell from 64 to 52 percent. That sounds pretty, pretty ominous. But uh, the last rating, uh, uh, German rating of the U.S. in Bush's term was 30 percent. So while uh, opinions of the United States are not quite as positive, they're nowhere near what they were uh, back in uh, 2008 and for much of the preceding years. Uh, more broadly, what this survey shows, and th these, this series of surveys have shown, is that the image of the United States trails in terms of trend in opinion and, 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 and uh, degree of opinion what opinion about the president is. I mean, uh, when the President Bush was not well regarded, the United States was not well regarded in most places. And uh, now that Obama's better regarded, uh, the, United, uh, the United States continues to be uh, better regarded. Uh, the big problem, though, uh, the commonality uh, in public, the negative commonality in public opinion is views of the United States and views of the President of the United States in the Muslim world. Fewer than three in ten express confidence in, in uh, Obama in Egypt, Tunisia, Turkey, uh, and Jordan, and just 7% of the Pakistanis do. Uh, in, key, in, these, in these key Muslim nations that we've been polling in, majorities say they have an unfavorable view of the United States. Uh, the lowest numbers are in Turkey, um, Pakistan, and Jordan, where respectively 15 and 12 percent, 12 percent in uh, both Pakistan and, uh, and Jordan, say they have a good opinion of the U.S. So that, those numbers aren't any better. In fact, they're a little worse than they were in, in Bush's years, even though initially there was a positive response to uh, the United States, a more positive response to the United States, and a more positive response to Obama in Muslim countries, but that's dissipated. But we really get to uh, the heart of the problem that we find for Obama when we ask about uh, how do you feel about his policies. And there we see pretty big drop. In Europe, three years ago, 80% said, I approve. This time, 60% said I approve. These are round numbers. In Muslim countries, 30% th uh, three years ago, 15% now. Russia, 40%, 20%. Across the board, many fewer people saying, I approve of his policies. Uh, and what are the specific complaints? As, we, as in the Bush years, the biggest complaint about the United States is that uh, is the perception that the United States acts unilaterally and does not consider the interests of other countries when it uh, makes its foreign, major foreign policy decisions. Uh, American uh, anti-terrorism e efforts are still widely uh, unpopular in predominantly Muslim countries, extremely unpopular. Uh, but not in the West. In the West, there's been a turnaround since the Bush years where the U.S. Uh, uh, anti-terrorism measures are considered um, uh, good ones, and uh, there's, there's approval. But there's one big exception in this survey. There is considerable opposition all around the world 
to drone strikes. In 17 of the 20 countries, more than half disapproved of the United States drone attacks that targeted extremist leaders and groups. American, the American public was the only public of 21 countries that we surveyed where a majority said, we approve of this policy. Um, it really stands out. Uh, Pakistan, we've only asked this question in Pakistan in, in years past, and the Pakistanis continue to disapprove. They see the drone strikes in their country, U.S. drone strikes, as a, as a threat to their sovereignty or violation of their sovereignty. Um, but uh, people all around the world largely agree with them, and I'll, again, I'll show you the numbers. Um, more generally, there's a sense that Obama has not lived up to the expectations that people had of him when he, uh, when he, when he took office back in 2009. Many believe that he would consider their interests. Uh, plurality said that back in 2009. 58% said he hasn't done that. 54% uh, uh, said he hasn't sought international approval for using military force, probably referring to the drone strikes, uh, even though a plurality believed he would do that. Uh, 59% said he's not been fair with respect to uh, the dealings between in, in, in dealings with the Israelis and the Pakistanis, and the expectations is that that would be the uh, I'm sorry, uh, the Israelis and the Palestinians, and 61% uh, were said he didn't has not lived up to his promise to take steps to deal with climate change. So expectations have not been met. Uh, few people uh, feel he's accomplished the things that they expected of him four years ago, or three years ago. Uh, nonetheless, uh, when we ask people about uh, re-election of Barack Obama, uh, we find large percentages of Europeans, uh, majorities in just about every country save Greece, saying they'd like to see Obama re-elected. Uh, we find most Brazilians and Japanese agreeing, uh, the only place where we see real real dis, uh, disapproval or, or, or thumbs down to Obama winning re-election is in the Muslim countries. Um, the one other thing that I will add uh, is, a, is a trend that we, about this survey, is a trend that we've seen in other surveys, and that is while publics around the world still worry about American military power, uh, the global financial crisis has um, taken a toll on the image of the United States as economic power. Uh, we have a plurality of people now seeing um, China as uh, the more, most powerful economic, uh, powerful economy in the world, not the United States. That's very different. And solid majorities in Western Europe in particular think that uh, China has eclipsed uh, the United States. And for the most part, uh, our previous surveys have shown that uh, they, this is a case where they're unhappy about the loss of American, economic, uh, loss of econ uh, American power. So um, let's take a look at some of these numbers. Uh, Jacob, why don't we, here are the countries that we surveyed, Britain, France, Germany, Spain, Italy, and in Europe, those are very familiar. We also did uh, uh, Greece this year, and uh, to uh, we did a, another report on uh, the image of the United States. I mean, uh, attitudes to, toward uh, the Euro European uh, economic crisis and the Czech Republic as well. We have Russia, and then uh, Turkey through Pakistan, that are the the countries that we typically poll. Tunisia is a is a new one for us. We're going to have a report on the Arab Spring shortly featuring attitudes uh, in Tunisia, China, India, Japan, Brazil, Mexico. These are typical of the countries uh, that we poll in, again, except for Tunisia and uh, Greece. So here are the favorable ratings for the United States, and you can see there's just a slight slippage in France, 75 to 69 percent. It's flat in Poland, and, and Britain it's down by nine points and down by 12 points in uh, Germany. Uh, the numbers in Greece are very low, 35 percent. No trend there. Uh, what's, uh, what's, 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 really, what's really significant is how much higher they remain uh, compared to the ratings for the United States during the Bush years. Uh, France is a good example. Was 42 percent, went up to 75 percent back in 2009, down to 69 percent. So a little bit off. In the Muslim world, um, the numbers are, uh, except in Lebanon, uh, considerably, considerably more negative, uh, and uh, 
if anything, there's been a little sl uh, slippage since 2009. You can see that in Egypt, uh, it was 27 percent. It's now 19 percent. Uh, in Jordan, from 25 to 12 percent. Japan is very positive. Uh, China mixed, as it's been, and so on and so forth. In Brazil and Mexico, uh, there is a pretty favorable view of the United States overall. So confidence in Obama's leadership. Uh, again, this is how confident are you in his, in his, 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 uh, in his, his, his uh, leadership on foreign policy. And for the most part, uh, the numbers are pretty good relative to the Bush numbers. In Poland, it was 41 percent. That was the best uh, Bush had in Europe uh, back in uh, 2008. It's 50 now for for for. Uh, for Obama. In Germany, it was 14. It went up to 93% in 2009, said they were confident. I guess a lot of people were surprised when Obama got the Nobel Prize, but I had seen these numbers before he got the Nobel Prize. <laughs> and the, the exaltation of Obama in Western Europe in 2009 uh, in was extraordinary. I mean, the, the, these numbers were among the most shocking I had ever seen, having uh, watched attitudes toward uh, looked at attitudes toward President Bush, just overwhelming uh, positive reaction. And it's still re reasonably positive. Uh, not, quite, not quite so. Different story in the Muslim world. It did go up in Egypt. Uh, confidence uh, for Obama went from 11 uh, from 11 percent from Bush in, in 08 to 42 uh, percent. It's gone back down to 29 percent. You see that same same pattern in, in most of these Muslim countries, uh, even in Pakistan to some degree, where uh, reactions to Obama were initially better than uh, re had been reactions to Bush, uh, but now they're back down in the Bush range, if not lower than uh, the ratings that President Bush received. And uh, the rest of the country is shown there in, in, in your report. Uh, next slide, Jacob. Here's a reaction to drone strikes. Sixty-two percent of Americans say this is a good idea. We approve of this. Uh, the Brits were were divided, but there's no division of opinion elsewhere. I think maybe there is in India, where it's large, largely a lot of no opinions, but it's overwhelmingly negative in just about every country. Not only in, in countries like Turkey or Egypt, but in uh, Italy and uh, France and, and Germany. Uh, this is a very negative response to this policy. So here's the um, numbers that I, I talked about earlier. These are the median responses to the questions we asked in 09 versus 012 about will he consider the interest of your country? Is he considering the interest of your country in conducting foreign policy? And you can see the 42 will not was has jumped jumped to 58 percent. And all across all all up and down the line, uh, there is a majority saying, no, he has not done that, even though the expectation was in 2009 that he would do that. And then one last slide, I believe. No, no, more than one. Uh, there is the uh, trend uh, with respect to who is the world's leading economic power. Again, these are medians, and they un understate just how strong the view is in the United States, I mean in, in Western Europe, that uh, China has eclipsed the U.S. with really solid majorities, not, not 40 percent saying uh, China's economy is more powerful. Here's the Obama re-election uh, numbers. Uh, boy, if he had numbers like this here, he'd be <laughs> really doing well. 92 percent yes in France, 89 percent in Germany. So even though there's a little less enthusiasm for him, disapproval of his policies, uh, the bottom line is, in, uh, in almost all of these countries, even in Greece, as disaffected as they are, they say, well, let's, let's re-elect them. You should re-elect them. So, so we most resemble Russia. Pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> our, our, our don't know is just a little bit higher, yeah, right. <laughs> lower. <laughs> that's right. Good point. <laughs> I think that's it, right? Yeah, you can, yeah, there we go. So I would be, I'll sit down here and we'll, yeah. we'll talk. Good. We'll open it up to uh, questions. Well, I can tell you Twitter is abuzz with uh, this study. As I said, it was embargoed till midnight last night, and uh, it's already making the rounds. We're tweeting at CSIS uh, is our handle, at CSIS. So if anybody here is 
on Twitter, uh, and Pew, and Pew Research is at Pew Research. But let's uh, open it up for questions. I know you must have a lot for Andy. Uh, let's go right here. We're, wait for the microphone. Microphones do work. Andy, thanks for the great presentation right here. Is there any uh, digging down on... Can you, uh, can you identify yourself? Yes, Kevin Grossinger, Brookings. Is there any digging down on Chinese, specific Chinese attitudes towards their, you know, mixed feeling on Obama? There's no specific... Is this, is this mic still working? This is working. That's working. Uh, there's nothing specific, but I'm sure that, that, that comes to mind, but uh, I think we've seen a fair amount of uh, negative reaction to uh, American, uh, American foreign policy uh, uh, and uh, also probably some economic concerns uh, uh, that the, the Chinese have about the United States. And American pressure on China with respect to the economy, with, with, with respect to trade policy. We're going to go right. We're going to go right down here. We've got all three in a line, so we'll just do all three. We can pass the microphone. Uh, can you hear me, Penny Star, CNS News? Yeah. What about the unfavorable favorable ratings for Obama in the Muslim countries? Is there any deeper layers of that? Of of knowing why that has changed? Are there any issues that you asked about specifically? Well, I think uh, uh, the drone strikes is probably uh, uh, an obvious answer. I think there was uh, a positive expectation that he would deal more fairly uh, with the Israeli-Palestinian situation, and they've come to, view to, to say that that isn't the case. In 2009, what we did is we did a survey around the Cairo speech. And uh, prior to the Cairo speech, the Palestinians were very negative uh, toward, uh, toward Obama. And uh, the, uh, after the Cairo speech, they were somewhat positive, not, not, uh, not majority positive, but more positive, and uh, their expectations and hopes were raised. The only country that, where there was a lower opinion of the United States in 2009 than in 2008 was Israel in the survey that we conducted after the Cairo speech. And I think that's a measure, not so much of it, of, of, uh, it's a measure of the way the, is, uh, it, it, was, it was regarded in that region and he was defined in that region. And clearly from these numbers, there's not that, uh, there's not that view now. Go right here. Uh, Akbar Khwaja, I'm a World Bank retiree. Uh, just a follow-up question to this. Uh, how did you choose the sample and population in the Muslim bloc, and why only five I'm sorry, countries? Sorry, cho choose a sample where? Muslim. In the Muslim countries, how the sample size was chosen, and what was the time frame when the survey was done in those Muslim countries? Sure. Because you repeatedly said drone strike, mostly it was in Pakistan, but what about other Muslim countries where there was no drone strike? And also you picked up five or six Muslim countries. You think they truly represent the Muslim bloc? Thank no, you. no, they're not designed to be totally representative of the Muslim bloc. They're, they're designed to be key countries in which we, can, we feel we can do able surveys. Uh, the sample size is uh, determined uh, by the... Uh, margin of chance error that we're willing to live with, and it's the same for a very small country as it is for, for a big country, uh, the miracle of statistics. Uh, the samples are drawn in uh, a way that uh, they're, done, they're, they're personal interview samples. They're not phone interviews as they are in the United States and in Western Europe, and uh, uh, samples of neighborhoods, areas, villages, uh, are drawn at random from um, whatever the statistical uh, databases are in these countries, and in some of them they're pretty good. And interviewers or teams of interviewers are sent to maybe two to three hundred or maybe less than that, maybe a hundred to two hundred locations to do these interviews, and the locations are drawn with probability proportionate to size, and um, they're very much like the area in, in, in in overall design, they're very much like the area sampling or the personal interview sampling that we do here. The execution, obviously, is quite modeled to, to respond to the conditions in these countries. But we try to use the very best uh, market research and survey research organizations. Uh, we monitor them. We make sure that uh, 
that the survey's uh, results look like the population. We did a phone survey in Egypt last year, which we, which we, uh, which we never released. We, we, uh, we found it unreliable, so we, are, we do a good deal of, of quality control. And um, they're not perfect, um, but uh, the numbers are pretty reasonable, reliable, and they move in ways you would expect them to move, given world events. I'm Bruce Van Voorst, formerly Newsweek and Time magazine. Two brief questions. One, uh, on the, uh, the question of Israel, I noticed you had not polled Israel, at least on the chart here. Uh, my question is why not? You, you asked the neighbors about Israel, but not about Israel. And, and secondly, uh, could you describe a little more the interviews that you conduct? This, refer this goes directly to the question of the reliability and the authority of, uh, of the polling. Sure. Uh, we typically, uh, or I shouldn't say typically, we often uh, survey Israel. Uh, we will certainly survey Israel in 2013. Uh, we've probably done them a half, half of the surveys that we've, in half of the years. It's a matter of uh, resources. We didn't survey Indonesia this year, and we survey Indonesia most years. So it's a matter of our editorial judgment tempered by our, <laughs> our budget. And so Israel and the Palestinian territories were not surveyed. Your other question was about our, question, our questioning technique. And the questioning technique is we write the questions here. Uh, we have a team of experienced international researchers. We structure the questionnaires in ways that we structure um, American surveys, and obviously, uh, and doing them and asking the kinds of questions we feel ordinary people can answer. Uh, we send them overseas. We have them translated into uh, whatever languages and dialects we need, and then they're sent back here, and we check that the translations are correct. We organize the questionnaires in ways where we don't feel we feel we're getting uh, honest answers, and one question is not setting the context. We're not setting up context for another question. How many how many languages and dialects in this one? 30 to 40 different languages and dialects in a 21-nation survey. Terrific. Uh, we're, Barbara, right here. Barbara Slavin from the Atlantic Council and Almonitor.com. I wanted to ask if you uh, took into account in any of your questions anything to do with the Arab Spring and attitudes about how the United States reacted to that, and also whether you could project a little bit, since it seems that what people are objecting to is U.S. unilateralism, which is strange given that Obama tries to be so multilateral in many things. Could you project whether uh, another administration coming to power that was sort of even more unilateral, how that would impact, particularly in the Muslim world? Thanks. We're going to release a report uh, more thoroughly uh, that probes more thoroughly attitudes in Muslim countries toward the Arab Spring. But we did release a survey in Egypt. Um, and when we asked about uh, the role of the United States uh, and the influence of the United States and what's, going, what's happening in that country now, the majority answer was, they're not a player. <laughs> no effect. Neither good nor bad, no effect. So the United States is not seen as, uh, as, uh, having, as, as having had a significant role, at least in Egypt. I haven't looked at uh, the, the other numbers, but my guess is uh, that's probably what, what, the, uh, uh, what, what the response will be. What was the other aspect of your question? Um, you can just yeah, uh, it, it was the question of unilateralism. It seems odd because Obama tries to be so multilateral, lead from behind, et cetera, and yet the perception in the Muslim world is that the U.S. is still taking unilateral Actually, when was this thing turning off? Uh, <laughs> the numbers are not uh, that different about American unilateralism in the Obama era versus the Bush era. So it's it's a broad perception of the United States. And then when you ask, when we ask the specific question, well, what about Obama, not just the United States? Has he lived up to expectations? We didn't say has he lived up, but we say has he been a multilateralist? People say no. So it's uh, irrespective of the way he may uh, 
uh, be conducting himself. It's the way he's perceived. Probably. Question right over here, sir. Wayne Mary, the American Foreign Policy Council. Your survey is taking place in an environment in which in many of the countries where you are polling, public attitudes toward their own leaders and toward their most immediate neighbors are often uh, in fairly sharp decline. I notice very negative attitudes in your survey in Greece towards the United States, but those attitudes are positively benign compared to Greek attitudes towards their own political leaders. So my question is, to what extent have you cross-analyzed these attitudes towards the United States uh, to account for perhaps just a general level of dissatisfaction reflecting the global economic crisis, problems that Japan has had with Fukushima, uh, other issues that may simply make uh, public opinion globally sour in general, and to what extent the United States is the recipient of that uh, as disaggregated from specific issues like drone strikes, where I think it's probably quite clear there is a very specifically anti-U.S. bias. Look, you don't have to do a <laughs> big, sophisticated analysis to, to, to come to the conclusion that that's what's going on in Greece. I mean, I mean you've never seen numbers of, uh, with such discontent. I think we had 95 percent or so saying they're dissatisfied with conditions in their country, and they're just, there isn't anything that the, the Greeks are really high on uh, inside the country or outside of the country. So we just hold that aside. Yes, for the Greeks, that's... That, that's largely what, 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 what's going on. Um, to what extent is, does a sour mood of, uh, about various things affect opinion of the United States? I think in some ways there's a yes to that. Uh, uh, and in other places, for example, in Egypt, uh, there's a no to it. Uh, I don't think this, these, these changes have to do with the mood in Egypt. It has to do with uh, views about the United, uh, with views about the United Sp States specifically. Um, uh, one of the one of the issues uh, is that we did not find in Western Europe, for example, when the Great Recession uh, kicked in that attitudes toward the United States uh, soured that much. In fact, when we ask people the kinds of questions that we had been asking about who do you blame for economic conditions, the United States got very little of the blame. So I think you have to look at these, uh, these countries and situations on a one-by-one -one basis, on an, an individual basis, rather. We have a question over here. This ge the gentleman in the brown suit again. Thank you. Frank. Frank Dahl, uh, independent international consultant. A couple of questions. Um, it's significant that you didn't cover very many Latin American countries. Why is that? Money. Latin America is in turmoil at the moment and go undergoing tremendous change. It would be very good to see that reflected in a survey of this sort. The other um, issue is, and the other question has to do with the other block, which is Africa. Africa is important, emergent. It's been marginalized by most of us for a very long time, why don't we have uh, a survey in Africa or more African countries? Uh, the answer is one word, funds. Uh, we just didn't have the resources this year to do what we typically do, which is to, to poll in Argentina, to poll in Central American uh, countries, to poll in more African countries. But next year, we're going to do a 40-nation survey. Uh, we will cover Africa uh, fairly well. Uh, and certainly cover Latin America, but it's not because we didn't want to. Question right over here in the red. Uh, Brian Beery, uh, Washington correspondent for Europolitics. Did you um, poll on trade, tr trade policy issues at all? I know that President Obama has been much less active on the whole, um, you know, doing trade agreements, say, than President Bush. Ha ha have you polled on that issue? I don't know if we've done specific questions. There, there's no, certainly no trade questions that we're releasing today. We did release uh, some questions uh, in our European Confidence Survey, which is not specifically a trade question, but showed that the economic crisis is undermining uh, confidence in, in, uh, among European publics, not, Amer not American public, in the free market. We've been uh, monitoring attitudes toward the free market uh, 
uh, free market capitalism for some time, and it really took a dip in, in Western Europe. But as with respect to specific trade policies, do we have tra I, that? That's that's not not something that we pursued in this survey. The question right, right down here in the front. This young lady has been waiting very patiently. She says it's about time. <laughs> Hi, my name is Shirin, and I work with Radio Sawa. It's an Arabic language radio station. Uh, you've been doing this survey for quite a while now. Did it ever have, do, the, do these results ever have any impact on the American voters' opinion, or does it have an impact on the policymakers? Do these results go to the president, for example? Oops. These results are uh, widely circulated uh, you know, to policymakers here uh, in Washington and uh, around the world. Um, how much impact? They have. I don't know, let somebody else make that decision, but they know about it and they react to it. Um, this, the second part of your question was well, uh, I'm not going to make a judgment about how the administration comes to its decisions, but they certainly know about it and make both administrations have made um, a, 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 a uh, a lot, a lot of inquiries of, uh, about, uh, of us about what these surveys show and what they mean, and we, we provide them. We don't conduct these surveys for the government, but we use th they're used as a resource by the government. Question down here, sir. Microphone's on its way. R.B. Sloan with the Eurasian Medical Education Program. Is there any indication that our foreign assistance has an impact on attitudes in these countries. I know under President Bush, W. Bush, the PEPFAR program did have an impact on African countries in terms of their view to us. Is there any other example of that? In, in Africa, that, that's, that's clearly the case. And you can go back and see some of the surveys that we did in the middle of the last decade in Africa, and you can see the very positive reaction to the United States in Africa at a time when <laughs> there weren't many positive reactions to the United States. The other uh, aid problems that we've, uh, where we've seen a very positive effect was uh, obviously uh, the, uh, in Indonesia in response to the tsunami uh, where uh, the opinion of the United States had fallen to 15% in Indonesia and went back to 35% in response to that, uh, to our effort. We even saw uh, in Pakistan, which is a tough nut to crack in terms of the image of the United States, uh, a boost in favorable ratings of the United States in response to the earthquake aid in, was it 2006? I can't yeah, remember what year. Right. 2006. So you do see, you, you do see s response to some of these extraordinary things. Um, we had some interesting questions, I believe, uh, and I'll let someone else respond to you off, off off microphone on, in Egypt about American aid. Uh, you might follow up with some of my colleagues here. I don't want to mi misrepresent them. Great. Uh, young man right back here in the green shirt. Yeah. Adam Isaacson with the House Foreign Affairs Committee. I was wondering if you could comment on what some of these statistics might indicate with regard to how the populations arrive at their views, what maybe media sources or information they use to uh, to respond to your questions. Well, I the mic again. Oops. Oops. That's a um, uh, that's a very difficult thing to do. Whether you're talking about American public opinion or especially global public opinion, but uh, we know that uh, we know through these surveys that that this is a globalized world, and to a certain extent, uh, people all around the world are drinking out of the same cup. Uh, looking at uh, looking at the kinds of uh, levels of information about the big issues, uh, they're pretty exten extensive. We spent a lot, a lot of time thinking about this in the Middle East, and um, you really can't underestimate the impact of the uh, the, the pan national uh, uh, media, whether it's Al Jazeera or CNN or. Uh, or the the British uh, sky. I mean, the, these these global uh, resources give uh, 
people from uh, Tunisia to uh, to Egypt to Pakistan uh, a look at uh, what's going on in the world. Uh, that's that's a lot more common than what you would have found 25 years ago. Interesting. Uh, question: The dead center right here, Audrey. If you could just pass the microphone. Thanks. I'm Michael Hahn with the State Department. Uh, I have a two-part question. The first is, can you separate out um, attitudes towards the presidents here, which it seems like your focus is on, versus the image of the United States? Um, and the second part is, uh, we mentioned uh, um, uh, unilateralism as an underlying factor that seems to uh, lead to the perceptions of a anti anti US. Um, is there also in the in the question surveys a question that uh, that comes up often about uh, does the United States pay enough attention to your country? In other words, the exact opposite of unilateralism in a certain way. In other words, uh, that could be a factor that that controls a lot of this. Um, in the questions, thanks. Yeah, um, the image, uh, the image of the United States uh, overall, and the views of the president, as I said, uh, came home to us in two thousand nine. Just, just how linked they were. Uh, uh, that isn't to say that everything about the United States is captured in how people feel about President Bush uh, or President Obama. But people's general reactions certainly are. Uh, if you look, though, in greater detail about some, which we do in this survey, and I would uh, recommend that you look at the questions about how people feel about American, uh, the spread of American ideas, how they feel about American business, how they feel about uh, American pop culture, you see that there's a good deal of variation. One of the most interesting things in the survey, and it's not only in this survey, we've seen it before, is it that even though the United States is poorly regarded in the Middle East, there's a great deal of admiration for the American style of doing business. American, American, American style capitalism is popular in the Middle East. It's much more popular in the Middle East where the United States is not liked than it is in, uh, in Western Europe where it is liked. Um, similarly, with respect to um, with respect to globalization, people say, you know, we really like, except in the Muslim world, we really like American movies and songs and pop culture. Uh, but that's one attitude. But th at the very next, in response to the very next question, they say, you know, there's really too much America in this country. And anti-globalization and, an and, and, and uh, overdoses of Americanism are, are bound together. So it's, really it's, a, it's a really complicated question. I think the issue of paying attention uh, is, not, is not one that we've, uh, that one that we've really addressed. Uh, I think the question is more often uh, what, uh, what, what will our relationship be with the United States in relationship to, uh, g given what the United States wants to do? Certainly we saw the undermining of a strong public response, a strong public, re a favorable view of the U.S. in, in Turkey uh, over the course of the last decade in response to a number of things that the United States have done. So it's not a matter of asking the Turks whether we pay enough attention to Turkey, but it's a question of looking at reactions to, uh, among the Turks to what the U.S. has is done and, ha and proposed to do there. Great. We have a question right over here in the second row. Audrey, if you could just walk it up. Thank you. My name is Amal Mudalili. I'm a scholar at the Wilson Center. Uh, my question is about <coughs> the Russian numbers. I'm sorry, I can't, I can't, I can't hear you. My question is about the Russian numbers. I, I noticed that in Russia... What, what kind of numbers? The Russian, the Russian numbers. Russian numbers, yeah. okay. I noticed that the favorable uh, numbers jumped from 44% to 52% of the United States and Russia. How do you explain this? Do you think this has anything to do with the American support to the democracy movement um, over the last couple of years? How do you explain it? My second question is, why Saudi Arabia is not included? I know that you're going to talk about funds, but uh, you know, because of Yemen and the use of drones in Yemen, that would have made sense. Thank you. Um, 
I don't know. That's a good. That's a good. That's a good theory. That uh, that uh, the United States is more popular in an era where there is uh, a, a greater regard for, uh, or there's a, a heightened uh, desire for for democracy. I mean, we put out a report on Russian public opinion two weeks ago which showed uh, how trends and the importance that Russians attach to various democratic ideals have gone up markedly. Uh, that may well be uh, a, a, a measure of it. I'm really not sure why uh, we have that increase. It's something, now that we've gotten the survey out the door, we can begin to look in greater detail at some, some of these questions. Any, anyone in the front row here have a question about why Russian uh, opinion about why Russian uh, sir, uh, Russian opinion went uh, up so positively, uh, Jim. No, I think that is a good theory. Um, I think that you know, uh, image in the United States and Russia has a lot to do. Let's yeah. pass the microphone yeah. up to. This is uh, Jim Bell, director of international research at Hello. Pew Research. Hello. Hello. Okay. Uh, I was going to say that is a good theory. Uh, I think in the case of Russia, image in the United States has a lot to do with uh, Russian self-image. And we've seen positive developments in that front. So it's a complicated question. We haven't dug into the data deep and late enough to know for sure what we see this year. Okay. And the, sec the second part of your question is why uh, was Saudi Arabia not included? Uh, we find it difficult to conduct interviews and to draw samples and conduct interviews in Saudi Arabia. Okay. Uh, we have a question right here, this gentleman in the second row next to Barbara. Tom Nevertil from the State Department. I'd like to hear a little bit more about this uh, comparison or this question about what's the leading economy in the world, and if you could talk a bit about what the respondents think they're answering. In other words, is it who, what's the biggest market, or what economy produces the greatest prosperity, or what economy is the model that others should follow? If there's anything more you could elaborate, I'd appreciate it's, it. It's none of those specific. Uh, it's none of those specific judgments. It's just a. Uh, a question about what is the biggest, largest economy in the world? Is it uh, who's the most powerful? Wh which country has the most powerful economy? Uh, wh what is the specific wording, Richard? World's world leading economic power. Yeah, that is the question. So it doesn't go into any of the, the, the dimensions of, of attitude that you just suggested. But the trend is is uh, is really very very clear, and the react the reactions to it are. Uh, as I said, in Europe, very negative to this trend. Got a question right over here. Uh, thank you. Nathan Reich, CRS. Just to follow up on that question, one of the slides showed that uh, Western European countries, I think they were, largely believed that China had eclipsed the U.S. in terms of its power, in terms of its economy. Was that same question asked in China? And if so, what was the view? The Chinese do not, yes, it was asked in China. The Chinese ha do not have the view. They think the United States is the leading economy in the world. And there's been not been much movement on that number. <laughs> uh, right here. Trent Bishop of the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. Uh, my question is in regards to the youth in the Middle East. Um, they obviously played a pivotal role in Egypt during the uprisings. Um, do you have any kind of numbers or analysis on um, how the youth perceive Obama or the United States compared to your overall sample? I think what our survey shows this year is that young people have a more positive view of the United States. It's pretty clear. Years ago, I used to wonder why older people who had experienced, uh, especially in Western Europe, had experienced the U.S. as an ally at a time of desperate need, didn't have a more positive view of the U.S., and they never did. But now we begin to see younger people expressing more positive views of the U.S. It would be interesting to, to, to dig a little deeper into our surveys and try to figure out why, but it's pretty clear. In the way back. Um, Georgiana Cavanish from the State Department. Did you conduct any polling in Afghanistan or Iraq? No surveys in Afghanistan and Iraq. Uh, we've always found those countries to be uh, countries that are in the process of going th uh, undergoing uh, extraordinary events and conducting surveys that would be comparable to the kinds of, of, uh, of uh, surveys we conduct in more stable countries. Uh, 
not, not realistic. So the comparisons would not. There are many good surveys. Being you know, ABC does and the BBC do good surveys in, in both countries. We have time for a couple. We have time for a couple more questions. Okay. Well, we'll wrap it up with that. I'd like to. Th oh, we do have one more. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Right over here. Alex Ogrande for the European Parliament. Uh, do you have any insight into what in particular uh, caused the dip in Western European perceptions of President Obama and the United States in particular? Well, I think that um, it's what we showed at the back of the presentation, and that is that expectations that Obama would achieve a number of things haven't been met. Uh, from dealing with climate change to being more of a multilateralist. Uh, we didn't question about this, but there was a strong expectation that he would close Guantanamo, and uh, the Europeans uh, looked at Guantanamo as, a, as, a, as something they really didn't like about American policy. So I think it's, it's unmet expectations, and um, certain policies, certainly the drone policy is not one that uh, most most Europeans save the British have uh, much a, a positive reaction to. I'd like to thank Andrew Kohut uh, for this extraordinary presentation. Um, I know that this is available uh, at the Pew Research Center's website. Um, later this afternoon, we will have this event in its entirety with working microphones uh, posted on our website at CSIS.org. Uh, I'd like to thank Andy Kohut and his team for uh, presenting this terrific survey here.